Question three. Question three. Yes. It's on rotation. Um, we got a system consists of two small disks of mass M and 2M attached to a rod of negligible mass of length 3L as shown above. The rod is free to turn about a vertical axis through point P. The two disks rest on a rough horizontal surface. The coefficient of friction between the, desks, the disks and the surface is mu. At time t equals zero, the rod has an initial counterclockwise angular velocity omega zero about point p. The system is gradually brought to rest by friction. Develop expressions for the following quantity in terms of mu, m, l, g, and omega zero. All right, uh, let's see. Let's get a drawing first. Um, I think I'm going to go with Let's see, friction is going to be the important uh, force here. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with a bird's eye view um, uh, so that we could see a friction in our drawing. Uh, so uh, they kind of gave an angle. I'm going to draw it like this. I'm going to say, all right, we got, we got 2m and m. This bird's eye again. And, all right, here's our point P. It's, what did they say? Point P's around the center of mass? No, they didn't say. They just said uh, point P. It's, so we have an axis here. We have an axle. It's going to rotate around that axle. Um, we got M. And we got 2M. So there's a bird's eye view. Uh, and it's going to rotate uh, this way. Like that, 2L and L. Find the initial angular momentum of the system uh, through point P. All right, so this, since this thing, you know, with angular momentum, uh, we, you know, we either go uh, R cross P, which can, you can always use. I mean, if you look at all every little particle and stuff like that. But if you have something rotating about an axis, it's going to be a lot easier to just say I omega, as long as you can find your uh, uh, omega and I. Um, and uh, we know omega and I we can figure out pretty easily because uh, this is just a couple of masses on massless rods. Right? I saw Harbor Freight had a sale on massless rods this weekend. I couldn't make it out, though. Quarantine, you know. And... Uh, uh, I could have really gone for some of those massless rods. Those are hard to find. Um, I think the uh, college board scoops them all up is what happens. Uh, initial, and uh, okay. So, uh, first, I'm going to need to know the moment of inertia because I'm going to use angular momentum is uh, I omega uh, zero. All right, so I got to have to find I. All right, so uh, I, moment of inertia about P L about P um, is uh, it's going to be sigma uh, all our masses times our distance squared from the point of rotation. And the point of rotation is P. So in this case, it's going to be, we got this one, which is going to be M times 2L squared plus that one, which is 2M times L squared. All right. Well, this is going to be pretty easy, actually. So we end up with uh, 4ML squared plus 2ML squared, which is 6ML squared. That's moment of inertia about P. So uh, initial angular momentum around P is uh, 6 M L squared omega zero. Um, and uh, that is uh, out of the board. Out of board. Using right hand rules going around like that. Boink. That way. Out of board. Out of board or uh, we usually call that positive. 
All right, the friction torque acting on the system around uh, about the axis. So we want the frictional torque. All right, so uh, as it's going around, uh, we have, uh, I'll do it in red. You can do it in red. We got a force of friction this way, friction that way, and we have a force of friction uh, that way. Hey, let me put that M back in case I forget. M. All right, this is going around, we got that friction. So we got the torques. And then we're gonna find, uh, we wanna know the time, capital T, that it takes to come to rest. I think we're gonna calculate the angular momentum. And then we're gonna use uh, circular kinematics to uh, find uh, how long it takes. Now, let's see. Okay, so we wanna know the torque due to friction. All right, so some of the torques about point P it's going to equal I about point P alpha. You know, I'm going to do this all in one, one shebang. Uh, I'm just going to solve those here and uh, put that in there. And uh, all right. So what torques do we have here? These are all positive torques. And we got this torque, uh, which is due to the friction on M1, which is going to be F positive times uh, 2L, right? We got the force. Uh, times the distance from the point of rotation plus F times L, right? Those are our two torques equals, uh, what was it, 6 ml squared alpha, right? All right. Now, uh, we know that this is mu N of the 2 L plus mu n of the 1 L, where I'm calling that 1 because it's 1 M, and I'm calling that 2 because that's 2 M, equals 6 M L squared alpha. Uh, all right. Well, if we take a side view of this thing, you know, we took a side view of these discs. We got our massless rod there, which they had on sale at Harbor Freight this weekend, but I didn't pick up any. We had it like that. Oh, uh. Uh, that's terrible. That's terrible. Let's try it again. Uh, not a very level surface, but you know, what can you do? Um, all right. So if we want to know the normal force, I'm going to circle the object of interest. And what do we got here? Uh, well, we, we do have the rod force, but we don't care about that. We got the normal force up and we got the weight down and uh, some of the forces in the y equals zero. So the normal minus mg equals zero or the normal equals mg. In this case, the normal is going to equal 2mg because it has a mass of 2. All right, so we end up with m uh, mu n2 is 2mg l. Something's not right here. What do I have? I got, because that should be 2L. That should be 2L. That's 2L, right? 2L. And one 2L. That's 2L right there. All right. So we end up with, uh, on the torque side, I can't really do my algebra here because we got to solve for the torques first because really this was a question B right here. What's that? Torques due to friction. Uh, which is going to be, uh, I'm going to factor out the mu L and... Uh, we end up with the two normal forces. Um, we had uh, N2, which is 2mg times L, and then plus mg, but there was a 2 there, equals 6m squared alpha. So what do we end up with? We end up with uh, 4mg L mu equals 6 ml squared alpha. All right, so that's kind of, these should have been negative. It's in the negative direction, so these are negative. Those are negative torques. Those are torques, we're saying this way is positive. Those are negative torques. Those are negative, negative, right? That's the negative direction. All right. All right, so then I'm just going to solve for alpha now because they want to know how long is it going to take to stop. 
And if I if this is constant, it looks like it's gonna be constant, 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 constant. Yep, that's constant. <laughs> I love it when it's constant. Cause then I can use a circular cinematic equation. All right. Uh, M L <laughs> minus four sixths G mu over L equals alpha. All right, let's see. Do these units work out? Uh, I got meters per second squared divided. I got per yes, I got per second squared. So the units work out anyways. So uh, this looks like it's minus two thirds mu G over L is alpha. All right, I want to know how long it's going to take to stop. Uh, I think I'm just going to say omega 1 in the beginning equals, I, this is when it stopped, this is when it started, plus alpha delta t. And uh, so I'm just going to solve for that. Now it stops, so that's going to be a 0. So we end up with minus mu 0 equals like that. And minus mu zero over alpha equals delta t. They wanted to call that big T though. So we're gonna call that big T. That's what they want to call it. Fine. You can call it whatever you want to call it. I don't care. That's fine. You're the college board. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, and then we got a 3L and we got a mu G. That's what looks like it's T right there. Um, but this was negative. So I put another negative in there, and uh, all right, so I end up with a positive. Beauty. I hate it when time is negative. Um, can be, though. We lost our two. We lost our two. There we go. Mu zero, three L over two mu G. This, our algebra gave us a negative, and our alpha was negative, so we end up with a positive. All right, so that's, I guess, the answer to C. Uh, the time it takes to stop is uh, 3L over 2 mu G omega 0. All right. I like the sound of that. All right. I think that's it. This one wasn't too bad. Um, nothing real tricky here. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, all right. Catch you on the flip side. It's